Hey everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at performance profile using um, flame graphs provided by X-Ray and Eczema. Um, so today we're talking about flame graphs because we want to understand why uh, why page load slow, why page request slow, what's the time going to, that kind of thing. Flame graphs are a really uh, quick way to understand exactly where that time is going. It's a very full picture very quickly of, um, of, of the request. Um, so quickly before we get started, uh, let's go through the kind of tool setup here. Um, so I'll be using a base Altus install with a couple of plugins um, just to add some load to the site, basically. Uh, the base Altus install already comes with everything that we're going to use from like a profiling point of view. It's all just ready to go. However, um, it does bring three components together that you can use separate of Altus or anything. You don't need um, Altus to, to do this. So the first thing you're going to want is um, Query Monitor because the, the extension that we're going to use adds a new panel to Query Monitor. So that's a great plugin. Um, then the Human Made AWS X Ray plugin, uh, which is going to add, like, like I say, that new um, panel into X Ray for getting the performance flame graphs. And um, that plugin in turn requires a PHP module called um, PHP Exma, which uh, is developed by MediaWiki, very high performance, I would say, um, sampling profiler. Um, which we'll get into a little bit later, but before that, I just kind of want to show you how this works and how to read a flame graph. So if I open up Query Monitor and I go to the AWS X-Ray panel, and you see here, um, I have the flame graph. So every time I load the page, this flame graph is going to shift slightly because you know, each page load is slightly different, um, different things are cached, you know, things are not constant time. Um, so what does the profile show me? So if you haven't read one of these before, um, it can seem a little bit daunting at first, but it's conceptually quite simple. You get used to it quite quickly. So from left to right, you have the amount of time. So um, the whole profile, for example, is 240 milliseconds. Um, you see that lines up with query monitors measurement of 250, uh, somewhere around there. Um, so they're different measurements, but they're both kind of coming in at the same um, same thing. Um, uh, so left to right is time, and then top to bottom is the um, call stack. So at the bottom, you have the most deep call stack. You know, that's basically the active function at that point in time. And then running back up, you have the call stack of one or all of the things that got called to in order to call that function. Um, you can also look at it from, you know, uh, top to bottom instead of bottom to top. Typically, you know, like including the dollar settings file it takes 150 milliseconds. Um, I can click this to expand it, just get a, a bigger picture. Um, and then within WP settings, you can see what is, you know, happens within that. Um, there's some actions within those actions, you know, like we have um, the register blocks from WooCommerce, for example, that takes 25 milliseconds. So you can get a, quite a quick picture looking left to right of what are the big chunky things and then top to bottom, you know, why did that thing get called? For example, here we have like um, uh, WooCommerce gateway PayPal construct takes time. Um, why was that constructed? Well, I can look back up the, the call stack to understand why that was constructed. Um, that's part of WooCommerce get payment gateways, for example. And then why is it taking so long? I can see that from looking down from um, the construct. So I can see the get log file path is trying to read, read a remote file from S3 because my WooCommerce log is set to my uploads directory. That's um, uh, not always, let's say, best practice because uh, it can take time to read things from the uploads directories. And that's exactly what we see there. So again, the flame graph gives you a very quick picture right away of what is taking time, why did those things get called, and then ultimately, you know, what you're going to look to do is either eliminate those completely, like that function doesn't need to be called, um, and maybe optimize the function, maybe provide caching, memoizing the function or something. Uh, so there's a few different techniques, but ultimately the most important thing um, straight away is to understand where is the time going, why is that happening. Um, maybe just do a quick demo here of what it looks like if I have, um, you know, some obviously bad code that you might not well, you, you you would never write something quite like this, I'd imagine, but let's just um, add a function on init and then we will just um, sleep. Let's see what that looks like now. So straight away, you can see something very you know obvious is taking up a huge amount of the time. That's the left to right. Um, I can see that there's a closure in this file at line three. Um, and there we go, line three, I have my sleep function. So. Um, very quick to, you know, if you have slow functions, maybe it's reading a lot of file from disk, maybe you're JSON decoding a huge file, or maybe you're like sending a remote request with, um, you know, a, a PHP library, you know, uh, obviously some of these things Query Monitor will already have, already tracks HTTP API calls, but that's only going to track the things that are made through the WordPress um, uh, HTTP API. Uh, it's not going to include anything that is maybe using Guzzle HTTP or uh, maybe you're using file get contents on a remote URL or, or something like that. So uh, again, the um, the profile from X-Ray is going to give you a complete, let's say, picture of everything that is is taking time. Um, but we'll come back to that as well because it is a sample profile. Um, okay, so 
um, maybe let's just jump to one of the other pages here that can be a little bit slow. For example, in WordPress, something is not known to be that quick. It's loading up the post edit screen. So it took 1.5 um, seconds. And um, oh, that's because I still have my sleep in. Let me remove that. OK. OK, so 460 milliseconds, um, which may not seem bad, half a second. Don't need to wait long. It's generally quite good. But remember, I'm showcasing this on my um, M3 MacBook Pro, which has incredibly fast memory, incredibly fast CPUs, uh, multi-core, so there's going to be no contention with other requests that might be happening. So it's really not um, a uh, probably a, a good comparison to how stuff is going to be running on um, hosting in the cloud. However, uh, what's kind of more important from these flame graphs is you're getting a picture of what's relatively taking the most time. That will generally be quite consistent. If the CPU is a lot slower, you're just going to see the same flame graph essentially, but everything is going to be much bigger numbers. Uh, so if I see here, like my preload API request, 60 milliseconds, um, what's that maybe like 12% uh, or something of the um, page load, that's probably going to stay fairly consistent. Um, so if I eliminate that, um, then that's probably how much percent I'm going to be saving. But it's often better to look at numbers relatively rather than absolutely because, uh, you know, our computers these days are, are really so fast um, and they're only having to deal with one request for a service. Though the whole machine may be a lot, you know, more powerful when you multiply that by amount of traffic that that machine may be um, servicing, it's you know you probably really want to be looking five to ten x slower than what you're actually getting on your um, like brand spanking new um, Apple laptop. Um, so looking at relative numbers, that's definitely something worth bearing in mind. Um, and obviously, not every request does exactly the same thing, so it's not unusual to kind of you know want to test a few times with with anything. Um, here's actually something I discovered the other day. If you see this this one here, you can see that we have a call in edit form blocks, which is in queuing the media, which includes PL upload, which in turn calls Dolly P image editor iMagic supports mime type. That takes 30 milliseconds, which is quite um, strange. That definitely struck me as something that I wouldn't expect. Um, so I went and had a look at exactly why that is happening. So uh, when you load the editor, WordPress wants to know if you have um, an image editor that will be able to support um, WebP or AVIF files. Every time you load the editor, it does that check um, to support mime type. Um, now, that is actually not a very fast function at all. That's just like the nature of the iMagic libraries. That is not a quick function. If we pull that up, um, WP image editor iMagic, and then I think I have that here. Um, that's this query formats function. So uh, that takes maybe like 15, 20 milliseconds to run that function. May not again seem like much, but you know that is quite a, a significant amount. You know, performance profiling is typically a case of um, go go piece by piece and let the you know three percent add to another three percent to another three percent, and then maybe you're getting 10, 15 percent performance improvement, which is quite significant. And users are, are definitely going to notice that kind of improvement. So. Um, something like the speed of the, how long this image editor is taking would definitely concern me and is something that I would look to resolve. Um, maybe, you know, there is a way to short circuit that with a filter. Maybe, you know, there's a pull request that should be open against WordPress core to use a cache for something like that. Could have been that when this was introduced into core and um, it wasn't profiled at the time, it might have been that that function wasn't loaded on every post editor screen. And now it is since they've added support for AVIF and um, WebP. So, um, yeah, that's, that's usually how I'd kind of like uh, look to solve those kind of, um, kind of things. Um, so. We spoke a little bit earlier about the type of profile this is. Typically, there's two types of profiles or profiling that you can do um, that can generate a flame graph or, or for other things as well. Um, this is what is called a sampled flame graph or a sampled profile. Uh, what that means is that whilst the request is happening, at every interval of some amount of, let's say, milliseconds, it's going to measure what the current call stack is at that point in time, and then it's going to build you up a picture over time. So if you just imagine this scanning left or right as the request is happening, take the current call stack, this is a five millisecond interval, take the call stack every five milliseconds, and then build a picture of it. That is a very, very fast thing to do. Um, you can generate those at virtually no performance overhead. That's why, for example, uh, in Altis Cloud, every request that comes into the infrastructure, then um, you get one of those um, profiles. So if I just um, load up the demo here, and then I should be able to pull that in. See, I have a flame graph there. So every request that we're taking into Altis Cloud, we're generating full flame graph for. Again, that's only possible because we're using a sample profile. Now, what are the downsides to a sample profile? Because it is ultimately a trade-off. Um, but first, I, I'll talk about the second kind. So the second type of profile is a full call trace profile. That's going to be the kind of profile that you get from an Xdebug profile, for example, um, or a uh, Blackfire profile. Um, maybe this use Blackfire. Or um, what's another one that um, 
people would often use even like a new relic um, profile or something like that. Those are a full call step profiles. And what that is doing is every time um, in PHP that a function either enters or exits, which will maybe happen a couple of hundred thousand times every page load, information is going to be gathered on that. And then all that information is collected back together and then produces something like a flame graph or a core graph. We can produce a lot of different visualizations. The problem is that is a very slow thing to do. It can add maybe 34%, you know, 30 to 40% overhead of any page load by just profiling in that way. So it's not really suitable to do like a production um, profile. Um, now it's a lot more accurate if you do that because you've literally seen every single function. It's very prohibitively slow. I would say also doing the profile itself slows things down. So it also gives you kind of a, a bad view of actually what is happening. So we have a sample profile here. What that means if you have a sample profile is you can't really trust anything that it is that is as short as the interval time. So for example, five milliseconds into the program, for example, we knew that we were in redirects.php, but we've only got one data point for that. So we don't actually know whether it took anywhere between you know, 0 0.001 and five milliseconds. We don't know how long that is. So for anything that's a single frame, um, you're typically not really gonna be able to you know, get a huge amount of information. Get real path um, took up to five milliseconds, let's say, but we don't know if it was longer. Now, when we have something that took 105, well, that's fine. We know that it took at least um, I guess a hundred and at most maybe 109. So like technically we're lacking a little bit of information. Um, so that just means that you should always bear in mind what is the um, resolution, let's say of the flame graph, because it is tempting sometimes to keep drilling down and keep drilling down until ultimately, you know, you want to understand where the time is going. But, but once you're at that minimum interval length, you're kind of not got the information anymore. Um, so we use a five millisecond interval by default, but you don't actually have to, you can change this. I think if I open up, um, so if I go into the AWS X-Ray plugin, you see here we have sample interval, um, five milliseconds there. I can change that to a one, I can reload. And now I have a much, much more high resolution uh, flame graph. Typically though, it's not really given us a huge amount more information because anything that would likely be a problem is probably taking more than five milliseconds. Like this WC payment gateways in it, for example, that was taking 33, whether it's a five millisecond or not, I already know the kind of where the problem lies and what I might want to do to solve that. I probably don't need to go all the way down to one millisecond. You can see it's, it takes a little bit longer for it to generate that. Um, and just generally has a little more overhead. So five milliseconds, I think is a good default. It's a lot quicker to generate. It basically gives you all the information that you need um, anyway, but definitely something worth bearing in mind um, when, when uh, using um, flame graphs. Again, uh, every request that comes into the Altus infrastructure, you will be able to get a flame graph for. So once you are using it locally to do performance optimization and testing there, you can also look into all of the requests in um, production staging dev as well to understand why are they taking time there? Does that match what I'm seeing locally, et cetera? You see here, I have a database query, for example, uh, it's taking up 15 milliseconds. Um, so again, the flame graph is a, a really quick way to straight away understand where is the time going in this request? And what is the reason why all of the functions are being called that are taking time out of that request? Um, you can't necessarily eliminate those, but you definitely can optimize. And it really is a case of methodically going through, you know, piece by piece, um, how do I make it so, you know, this isn't slow. I can see that there's some WooCommerce logging here that is logging to the uploads directory. Um, that is a slow thing. Maybe I could disable the log, for example, maybe I could put the log in a different place. Um, performance profiling, performance optimization, generally the first step is always to understand what is taking the time. Without knowing what is taking the time, there's basically no point in doing anything in terms of, you know, implementing uh, caching for things or optimizations, micro optimizations. You don't know how, you don't really know anything until you can get a very clear picture of what is taking the time. And that's what uh, flame graphs are, are so useful for. And that's why we have them by default out of the box on every Altus install as well.